So these are the cuffs I've made with the copper tubing kit. This one, as you can see, has like a line texture around it. These are both air chased and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this one is with a ball pane hammer and this one has been textured with a uh, flat ended hammer. To start with, I'm going to mark out six inches on the piece of tubing and then I'm going to saw through it. So I'm just going to mark the six inches out with a fine tipped marker pen. There we go. Get rid of that. And now I'm ready to saw. So I'm going to hold it against the side of my bench peg. So we get a fairly straight edge. So I'm not worried about um, filing the ends as yet because we're going to seal these up. So next job, we're going to hammer them flat. I'm just using a slightly heavier stubby hammer to flatten those edges together, as you can see, and seal them on the end. Now repeat that on the other side. There we go. So what we've done is um, trapped the air inside the pipe so we can get ready for a bit of air chasing. Don't worry about the grubby bits or sharp bits as yet, we'll get back to finishing those later. So I've just got a ball pane hammer, as you can see with a ball end, and I'm going to give this a good whack. So you can see we're starting to get a really nice texture and what we're doing is chasing the air through the pipe and pushing it back out. As we're hitting the pipe um, we work hardening it every time um, so you will need to anneal it in the middle. I'm just going to run a blowtorch around it, warm it back up and the pipe will become more, more, more malleable again. Now because it's going to be red hot, I'm going to grab it with a pair of my reverse action tweezers and quench it. this piece is actually too big to fit in my quench bowl so I've got a squirty bottle of water which is really handy for jobs like this and you can just run the water down the pipe and then put the other end in so you know it's nice and cool now it's cool enough to touch now I can get a bit more hammering done So I'm quite happy with that effect. Now I'm going to anneal it again because I want to form it into a bangle shape. Now I'm going to quench again, exactly like I did before. There we go. Pop the other end in, and make sure that's cool with the water bottle. There we go. Right. So before I put this around my bangle manager, I'm going to make sure it's nice and dry. As 
I don't want to get water around the bangle mandra, it makes it really slippery and also can make it rust as well. And there we go. I've dried that up. You can see you've got some nice uh, flame painted patterns in here as well. You've got some different colours going on. Um, you can either polish that out to get um, a nice shiny silver, silver, <laughs> copper <laughs> colour like this, or you can leave it as it is. So I'm just going to start shaping this up. So before I start um, forming this around the bangle mandrel, I'm going to use a pair of uh, pliers that have got like a curved set of drawers. So, um, they're just uh, nylon pliers and it's just going to help me because this copper is quite thick. It's just going to help me start to get that shape in so I can um, pop it around the bangle mandrel a lot easier. It's going to give me like a, a start, a nice easy start. So I'm just going to work my way around it. and get to the end. I'm just going to start pulling it in so it's more of a, a bangle shape. There we go. So this is quite tough. So um, give your hands a break in between. There we go. So you can see I've kind of formed a very um, crude bangle shape there. So next up I'm going to grab my bangle mandrel. Now I've got a, um, a steel one. You wouldn't want to use a wood one for this because um, it just won't be strong enough for this sort of work. Um, it's better for uh, wire. So um, I've got a steel one and I've got a rawhide mallet. And you can see where I'm going with this. I'm just going to pop my bangle over the top. You can see that having that shape already has really helped. And then I'm going to um, give it a good few taps. You really want to get those ends in so that we've got a nice shape. So I've actually started further down the bank mandrel. And then I will start working my way up to make it a little bit smaller. Just want to get that shape in so that it is then sat on the mandrel um, nice and easily. And then, as I say, I'll start working up. I'm just giving it a bit of a squeeze so it'll fit smaller. If it won't um, squeeze, if uh, it's got too tough, anneal it again and it'll soften up again. I'm hitting it quite hard because obviously it's now double walled copper so it is that bit thicker. mandrel over there so you can now see we have a bangle shape but it's not straight so um, I've got a steel block here on my wrench peg there's a lot of hammering involved and I'm just gonna straighten it out again if it won't go um, anneal it again and it will soften the copper up so you'll find it a lot easier to um, get it back in shape. I'm going to use my trusty half round pliers. You don't need to use these, you can use um, your normal flat nose pliers. Uh, you can always put some tape around them if you don't want to mark it or just file the marks out but quite simply because we've got like this lovely marked pattern in the copper if you add some more marks I just think it gives it more personality so uh, I'm just going to tuck these ends in 
And there we go. So you can see we've now got a bangle shape. Now I'm going to get these sharp edges off. So I haven't worried about them up until now um, because I knew I was going to attack them with a file. So uh, I've got a bit of sticky tape on that one. But yeah, I'm just going to run around the edges and um, just neaten them up. Get some curves going on around here and uh, get it all nice and tidy so it's not sharp to wear. So I've just got um, a standard needle file and I'm going in. So my files are uh, multi-directional so you can run them in both directions but if yours are single direction then obviously go with the direction of your file which is usually upwards. I'm just going to round these corners up. this out here and do the same the other side and you fold them into whatever shape you want really um, I like to try and keep it the shape it was to begin with but just give it a bit of a curve Take all those nasty sharp edges off. I apologise to Ben right now because I know he doesn't like the sound of filing. I'm really sorry. <laughs> You can also smooth it out inside as well. Uh, you can use your flat file like I'm doing, or you can use like a half round file as well to get in there. So we're just going to neaten that up and neaten this end up. There we go. That's all nice and smooth. There we go. You can either keep it this sort of um, very dark copper colour with a bit of uh, rainbow highlight in it where it's been flame painted or I like my copper really shiny so I'm going to use some super fine um, wire wool on it just to bring up those highlights um, across the top there. So I've got a 4-0 wire wool here and I'm just going to run that over and see how easy that is to clean up. It's just going to take all of those dark marks out. There we go. If you wanted to, you could obviously use um, a pendant motor, uh, polishing wheels, things like that to clean this up. I quite like the um, the mix between the darker copper and the high shine copper so I'm just going to run around this with the wire wall I'm going to do the inside as well there we go it's going to look a bit cleaner And there we are. You can see it's now looking a lot cleaner, a bit more presentable, and that it would make a nice piece of jewellery. It would also make um, a really nice piece of men's jewellery as well, I think. And I know that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, copper is meant to be very good for arthritis and other conditions like that. So, uh, yeah, it would make a really nice bangle. <laughs> 